going to be brief. I'm going to try not to be boring. Um, and the idea is to give you really the key concept of what is um, behind procurement and the principle of it. Uh, this being said, I see familiar faces in the room. I don't know others, so welcome to ITC. And uh, so for those of you who have been here for quite a while, please don't, don't get to the detail of a specific. I'm trying to reach here the key concept. So we're talking why I'm giving this spiel about procurement, it's about the delegation of authority. Uh, ITC sometimes has a way of uh, functioning which is very tongue-in-cheek, let's go. Uh, in terms of procurement, there is certain formality. And again, we have this idea of delegation of authorities. Basically, who on behalf of the organization can make a commitment with a private company? It's not given to anybody. It's called procurement service. The delegation is given to the director of DPS, who sub-delegated it to a chain of command, right, with me for certain awards, <coughs> up to a certain amount, to the head of procurement services. So I spare you the detail, but it's, uh, we have threshold $75,000. It needs to be vetted to the committee on contract, and the award is given by EVA. For uh, award below this and signing authority, I can sign a contract up to $200,000 per year, provided that EVA has approved the award. Head Procurement Services, this is Mr. Nitsen Weiss. He can make decision up to award up to $75,000, and he can sign awards, a contract with a company, up to $100,000, provided that EVA has approved the award. So there is one thing, is signing a contract with an external company, and there is the decision making of the award. Procurement assistant can uh, uh, approve and sign contract up to $40,000 per year, and certifying officer up to $4,000 per year. Yes, it's called the de minimis. So, and we have a credit card also, which is limited. So the idea is, it's a low value, it's a quick fix, I need to order several books online, it's worth $300. Let's not make a big thing out of it. You can go buy, do it, pay for it. It's a low value, low transaction cost, low risk. The higher you go up the chain, the more money is at stake, the more um, complex the delivery of the service is, the more constraining and structured the procurement must be, of course, because there is much higher risk at stake. So this is who is who in procurement. Hmm. What are the fundamentals? So what I love is that those complicated UN rules, I cannot do what I want to do. Well, the UN rules we have is key fundamentals. We must be fair. We must be integ have integrity and full transparency in the way we select our vendors. We must use effective international competition I cannot say, oh, I really want to purchase this because we're in Switzerland, I only want, I only want to use Swiss company. This is a no-go in the UN system. We must be open to international competition and effective international competition. I cannot play monkey business and say, oh, I'm going to invite all the grocers to go and now buy IT equipment. It has to be relevant. Best value for money, that's another thing. Oh, we go for the cheapest bid. This is not true when you have a complex procurement where the quality of service and the delivery of the service is at stake. It's being weighed with the price. So you do not take necessarily the cheapest offer, you are taking the offer that pre presents the best value for money for what you need to do. So it could be that you have a splendid offer. Oh, hello. You have a splendid offer that ranks very high with a very high level of quality and is extreme, extremely expensive, right? And you have another offer which is very good, maybe not as excellent as the first one, but it's half the price 
of the superb offer. You are going to take the second one because everything weighted. It's your best interest between the cost and the quality of service you are going to get to meet your needs. And finally, the interest of the UN, so it's the interest of ITC. Now, this we refer to the high UN financial rules and regulation. Uh, what did I write? Da, 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 da. Oh, yes. This is the other point I wanted to say. The key principle we have, frankly, is common public procurement. The US government follows the same. The EU follows the same. Most government has a way to do it and prescribe certain way to do it. The threshold might vary. In the EU, it's $5,000 and $100,000 a year. Or uh, for the UK, it might be $2,000 and $150,000. So I spare you the nuance of the threshold, but the basic concept behind are the same. Bingo. So this is an overview, and I think what I wanted to do about the selection, vendor selection process, I spare you the low value. Below 40,000, it's called a request for quotation. It's usually easy. We go through, we ask quotation, and you can compare. So there is an informality, and usually the time frame is between two to three weeks, depending on what you're buying. The more complex um, re um, services require a certain formality and a process which is much more involved. So we make you sweat at the beginning. We said, what is it you really need? Write your terms of reference of what you need. How are you going to evaluate the delivery of the service? And we are going to be very, um, how shall I say, rigorous at the onset of the process. Then we will send a tender to all the vendors, get the tenders, and for you to evaluate do the best value for money, and finally we will select the vendor that offers usually the best value for money. So I don't want to be too long and get through the detail. Ethics and procurement at ITC. This has become a very sensitive issue, not at ITC, but within the UN. And since it has been a sensitive issue in the UN, it is a sensitive issue in ITC. Zoom, 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 zoom. What do I mean by this? We had a very famous candle called Oil for Food. We spoke about it before. Voilà. So <laughs> since that happened, we went through an era of suddenly I was a criminal until I could prove my good faith. Thank God, now time has elapsed. And we are looked in a different way. But please beware uh, that whatever, and procurement is an essential support service function. It's not really the glamorous part of the house. I mean, we all understand this. And yet, be it or donors or member states, it's such a sensitive area, they're going to look at it, scrutinize it, and make sure that we buy things the proper way. So there is a very high, um, how should I say, pressure to do things the right way. So we keep our credibility. There is a whole ethics, and I think I refer to the fit, fairness, integrity, transparency. <clears throat> and this is really how I evaluate, evaluate the vendor, how I manage the contract with the vendor, how I select the vendor, and so forth and so on. So it's through the whole life cycle of what you get from an external party. Not just at the onset, how I choose who is going to do the job, but once they do the job, you also have a duty of fairness towards them. Up to the end. Roles and responsibilities. Here, what I want to highlight is the key principle of segregation of duties. You have a requester who said, those are my needs. This is what I need for my project. This is what I need to do video uh, filming and footage in Thailand. This is what I need to do my research for uh, trade, and so forth and so on. You are the one specifying what you need for your job. Procurement's role is to say, how am I going to get the vendors? Who is the pool of people? And I'm going to carry through the process to support you in the evaluation. <coughs> so there is a clear segregation of who is doing what. And we are in a system that will never give a budget to somebody, decide what to do, and decide who to give it to, and decide how to pay it, and pay it. You know, 
the system doesn't work this way. They always give it to at least two hands to make sure that uh, reduce you know, corruption, fraud, and everything. Sourcing of vendors, this is an art in itself. At times, especially in ITC, we are buying laboratory equipment in Lesotho, greenhouses, uh, trade research, specific data with four decimal points. Um, what else do I have? Special workstation for developers. So the, what we procure to what was alluded before, the UN, for instance, to the support of peacekeeping, is going to buy for 25 million of ration pack for the troops. The tender in itself is a very high value. In terms of transaction, it's maybe few, but a rat pack is a rat pack, you know? Here we go from trade related to data, to workshop, to IT equipment. So it's very diverse. Sometimes it's extremely, I wouldn't say a niche, but it's very <coughs> specialized in different areas. So we are quite broad. ITC internal checks and balances. Um, so here's the role between who is requiring, how they are going to do the evaluation, the role of procurement, and here's this role of the committee on contract. So for any award above 75,000, procurement does its bit, the requester does its bit, and then we got to present this to the committee. And the role of the committee is to make sure that we did the things the right way and the proper way. And they give recommendation to the director to say, now make up your mind. Is this solid? Is this robust? Do you want to give the award to this company or that company? Confidentiality and use of information. Of course, this is a sensitive uh, process, especially for large amount of money. So when we go through a selection and an evaluation, whatever is in the house stays in the house. You don't share the evaluation of vendor X by things with vendor Y and so forth and so on, because otherwise it breaks the whole credibility of the process. And contract management. Here again, it's a work in, in, in a team. In the end, you are the expert in your field. You know what you need to do your work. You are the best suited to say what is the quality the vendor is giving you, right? At the same time, procurement has a role to formalize, to ensure that the performance of the vendor is there. Um, and so there is, again, in terms of the contract management, you are dealing much more with the substantive part. If you encounter problem with the vendors in terms of performance, there is certainly a level of uh, dealing you have already of saying, you didn't do this, you didn't provide me that, or the quality of the, what you gave me is not up to standard. But then it needs to be formalized and channeled through procurement. Because if we enter into a much more difficult ground where we want to push, we don't want to pay certain things because they didn't deliver the service, we need to formalize all of that. So I've been trying to be brief. I spare you. The UN rules on procurement is on one page, hecto verso. It's common sense rule. We have a procurement manual for 100 pages. But you know what? That's my business to digest and to help you out in this. Um, so we will not go through the whole nuances of processes of a procurement. Thank you, Sophie. Any questions on procurement? No questions? Why we thought it was important in the delegation of authorities, we had a few cases of people going, going, and signing contracts on behalf of the organization. So beware. We try to make it easy at times, but also we're going to challenge you when there is issue where we feel there is no ground really, or there is too much, I know this company, only this company is going to do it, because this is not the trend.